Hello, I'm Cameron de Bontaine, King of the Laundrette, and this is a Board Deck and Dice review recap. We are recapping my reviews number 11 to 20, and I will recap them in reverse score order, because you know it's fun. Okay, the first review, or the lowest scoring review of the last 10, is Street Fighter, the deck building game, and that got a 5.5 from me. I like deck building games. Uh, this one had a couple of problems for me. Um, didn't do too much new or different. It didn't involve me directly engaging the other person in battle, which for a Street Fighter game, I, for, for me, is essential. And it just went on very, very long. So that gets a 5.5. Next, we have Food Fight, which is an enjoyable card game. Um, just one that is a bit complex to get to the table for new players. Um, one that I did enjoy, but again, some complexity, some um, mechanics, like when you didn't go in the same meal as anyone else to fight, you, you all have to choose the same meal time to fight each other. You fought a kind of uh, dog deck, and, and that wasn't very satisfactory. So that gets a six. After that we had Get Bit, which gets a 6.3, a clever little game where you're playing um, number cards and the lowest unique number moves their man away from a shark, but then everyone else with a unique number does and the person at the back literally has one of their limbs pulled off these little plastic figures. Uh, it's a great game and that gets a 6.3. Dice Heist is a push your luck dice game, um, very small filler game. You have four museums, and as you go along, they're filled up with more treasures, and on your go, you have to decide whether you're gonna roll your dice to attempt to rob a museum, or take a sidekick dice, which will give you a better chance of robbing a museum in the future. 6.7 for Dice Heist. Captain Carcass, the reskinning of Dead Man's Draw, a push your luck card game, very simple, there's some player powers in there, very easy to teach. A lot of fillers on this list today, but um, there we go, but uh, good for me. There were some problems with Kickstarter, but I'm happy with the end product that I got. Uh, Captain Carcass for playability and fun got a 6.9. Wink is a party game where you are trying to identify someone who has a card that you've marked on the table in front of you, and they have to wink at you before your next go. It always results in a lot of laughter whenever I play it. Uh, enjoy it a lot. That's a 7.5 for Wink. Now we have Zany Penguins, a card game where you're trying to collect sets on the table in front of you to score those colour cards in your hand. And it works very cleverly. If you've got the highest numerical value on the table, you score all cards of that colour in your hand. But if you haven't got the highest, you score the lowest card in your hand. So you get um, a couple of different strategies. You can either go to get score as much as you can on the table to score all the cards in your hand, or if you've got the higher cards of the eight or nine, scoring a lower card can sometimes get you more points than someone who's scored the most on a table. So it's quite clever. There's sort of a quasi-drafting mechanic where you're passing one card to the person on your left, one to the, card, the person on your right, and you get one each back from them. Um, really clever, like it a lot. Zany Penguin 7.9. Also with a 7.9 is the two-player game Patchwork. It's a tile-laying game around the theme of building a quilt. Uh, don't let you put that off. It's a fantastic game. There's limited choices as to which pieces you can buy. The pieces cost buttons, which are your end score, but also they make your move around this time track. And when you get to the middle of the time track, then you can't buy any more patch pieces. You will be penalised for any spaces in your quilt, but you will also uh, score any buttons that you have at the end of the game. There's more to it than that, but great two-player game. Would recommend this for, for most people, really. That's Patchwork 7.9. Uh, then we have Fuse, which scores an eight for me. I love Fuse, a dice-chucking game, uh, cooperative with a timer. Can I just spit a load of stuff at the camera? I'm really sorry, that's so unprofessional. What's even more unprofessional is I'm not going to edit it out. Um, Fuse is a cooperative dice chucking game and uh, you have a timer on iPad or iPhone or just a timer. The, the apps are really good and it, it's just tense and you're trying to work together but you've got to get the things in, bombs in front of you disposed of as well so you're trying to make the best decision all with this time going off. Uh, absolutely brilliant, a lot of fun Fuse. 
with an 8. My game of the month also scores an 8, but it is the one out of the two that I would probably prefer to play if the circumstances would allow, and that is Stellar Conflict. My copy is the old Artipia version, they've just reprinted it the, as the Stronghold with Stronghold games, and it's got a bigger box, which is good, because as you can see, mine has elastic bands on to keep all that goodness inside. Stellar Conflict is a game where you play in real time again, and you're laying out your spaceships to try and shoot everyone else's spaceships and get points. The scoring takes longer than the actual game, but you're scoring with elastic bands as measuring sticks, so it just works. I love it a lot. You can play multiple rounds in one night. My game of this recap is Stellar Conflict. Thanks very much. I've been Cameron Dubontaine, the King of the Laundrette, and you've been watching a Board Deck and Dice recap. We will see you next time. Cheers.